Stacey Hodgkinson. I can tell you honestly, coming here to this little studio, I had butterflies and they were about seeing you again. I have not seen you now for a year because you chose to pull back for a while. What was that about, Case? Uh, just to get my health under control, to make sure that I'm doing the right things with medications and what I need to do to get an easement of what I am enduring every day. And that did help. It helped to learn how to deal with my stresses and deal with like everyday life, which is what I needed to learn to, because it was a different way of doing it now. Like my disease causes me to have to relearn how to do everyday things. And it, it did help with just standing back to just learn just that. <laughs> Elaborate on that, relearn how to do everyday things. What are you going through, Casey? Um, well, with my, my disease, I still can't do simplistic things like doing the dishes. I still can't do a lot of things. It's a push. It's like exercise. So doing the dishes, doing any little things like the washing or just even sweeping up a little bit or doing anything is like exercise, like like hardcore ex exercise. So I have to Are you careful. meaning by that that it's painful or are you meaning that there's shaking? Pain, what, what's yeah. going on in your body? Uh, painful, I, it can cause flare-ups, which can cause the shaking, spasms and all sorts of things to happen. Oh, yeah. See. Are you still getting the spasms yeah. and the, are you still locking up like, yeah. like we saw in the early days? Yeah. Um, the medication I'm on helps me to not have that all the time and you'll recognise with a lot of diseases that is the case anyways. So it's just like, <laughs> it, it, it helps to have and to be on the right medication, 100%. And that was the journey I was going through and that's why I needed to step back to make sure that I had found that for myself, found the right way to do things. I've learned to help with my stresses by meditation and yeah, breathing techniques. And yeah, that's been very helpful. In, in what ways do they help, do you think? Relaxing. Is it yeah. relaxing the muscles? Yeah, uh, relaxing the mind and relaxing because um, what, what I'm told with the disease I have is like stresses can be a big trigger, of course. Like in everyone's stresses in life, it's like something we can't really avoid. It's just going to happen in your life. And, but to learn how to cope with it a bit better, that was a big journey for me. Definitely to cope with any emotional stuff that can cause stress as well. That was a big journey as well. I, yeah, it was a, and it is to this day, something I'm trying to learn for myself. And yeah, I'm hoping I'll get there eventually where it's just at the right, right stage. Yeah. I'll never forget, Casey, I had done one love letter to the nation saying this rollout of these forced jabs is wrong. And mm -hmm. somehow we were connected and you were the first <laughs> one I interviewed. I remember leaving that interview that day saying this will be done now. The government will see it has so, this jab has so injured a then 23 year old young woman at the start of her life. This government will stop this rollout. One case, and this will save thousands, maybe more millions of injuries and deaths. Yep. And they didn't. They didn't listen. They didn't respond. Have you yet had government financial help, ACC, anything? It's just working income, not ACC, which I'm actually supposed to be on. I have seen specialists and I've got diagnoses at this point. And again, it's ongoing. I have seen an immunologist who has diagnosed me with vaccine-induced autoimmunity. I've had a cardiologist now diagnose me with dysautonomia caused by this vaccine. And I've had a neurologist that, these are all private, by the way, because um, the public health system is still very much a brick wall. And you know, I wish I could say it isn't. I recently did go see them, the public health system and the neurologist, and it was a very, it was easy for me because I knew I was speaking my truth. I knew I was like going in there knowing that this is still going on. I'm still flaring up. I'm still having these things come up. I'm still having to struggle day by day. I go in there and they're still trying to say functional. They're trying, trying to say like, this isn't possible. Um, what they did really wrong for me is they put in a neurologist I only seen once and hardly any time compared to the other neurologists which could have seen me and he was a young one so he would he didn't know much about this and the interaction was like he again it was the gaslighting trying to tell me this isn't possible like it's just functional and how he said one part was very interesting for me because it got me to thinking something I didn't really think about and how he said is like it, it's got to be some sort of functional thing 
And then he looked down and he didn't look at anything because it can't possibly be MS or stroke. That's exactly what he said, like that. And I was like, why would you make that comment? And it really stuck with me afterwards. It hit me because I'm like, why out of everything would you make that comment? Like why it can't possibly be MS or stroke? Like trying to talk to himself about it. And I'm like, and it hit that way because of how he said it. And it was different from everything else he said. And I thought, why would, why would he say anything about MS? Like the, I never thought about MS about this. I was like, okay. So I thought, look into other things about it, ask other medical advice on this. And a lot of my symptoms very much are strikingly similar to MS. And so I did an email to them and I said, the, the comment you made was very striking to me. And I gave him all the evidence of showing, well, this is actually very possible. I'm not saying this is what I have, but I'm telling you this is very possible. What was very interesting in timing, and I don't know how this is possible, but the WHO, WHO, said that this vaccine was causing MS just recently. After this appointment with neurology, you can find, find this on PNB and proper government official. It's, they've done a whole research on this. It's almost like that young doctor could have been saying to himself, this can't possibly be the jab. Yeah. The denial within our public health system, which has obviously come from instructions from the very top yeah. from the government. But to think of that woman getting a damehood when a 23-year-old girl's life has been ruined. What are you now, Casey? 25? 25 nearly, yeah. 25. How do you remain so calm in the face of such grave injustice? Working through the anger, I can't like say that I've not felt that. I feel the anger. I feel the frustration. I feel all the things that you're going to feel with this. It's the processing, I think. I, I look at it and I look at how can I help myself not feel this all the time. Because I'm living with this day by day. I'm faced with this day by day. So what can I do to just be like, okay, you feel this anger. It's okay to feel this anger, but don't become it. Okay. So I sit down with myself and I discuss and I look into things that will help. I, at the moment, I'm doing meditations and stuff that help with this. And anyone else can do it differently. We all have our outlets. I have creativity as well. I do writing, I sing, that, that really much helps with that and it brings me joy and yeah, anything that can help you process things and bring up the good in, like emotions rather than always constantly be held down by those emotions. Like don't be scared to feel these emotions though, like these, this anger, this frustration, it's okay to feel it. Just don't put it onto others, don't let yourself become it. And that's the important part. If you're still with love, if you're still like, you're feeling it, and that's good. You need to feel these emotions. That's human. <laughs> it's not one side or the other. It's human. And that's part of processing. And that's my process. I process my emotions, and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling this. It's, I'm going to keep feeling it. I'm going to feel it again, no doubt. So 25 yeah. years old and wisdom so far beyond your years. So far beyond your years. But it's wisdom born of not only inordinate physical pain, Casey, but it's, it's born of incredible emotional abuse you've had to go through. And yet I don't see someone who's a victim or self-pitying or lashing up. Mm. Is the trolling, is the brutality of the comments online, is that listening, is that stopping, which it should have stopped ages ago. We've done past pieces yeah. exposing some of the trolls and they're disgusting. It's still there. It's um, seriously. Time, yeah, every time I put things out there, they're still there, and I get that they're outlining their process, their emotions, but they're doing it in the wrong way. I will, <laughs> I'll admit to that. They are doing it in the wrong way. We all process our emotions. It's about how you process those emotions, how they're processing their emotions and the information they're seeing from me and my experiences. They process it this way, which is not healthy. We can admit that. And these are the sorts of comments that might have said, you're acting, you're pretending, yep. you switch it on for the cameras. Yep. Oh my God. And yeah, so I've stepped back from social media because I realised I need to learn to focus on how to deal with these emotions better. That was the biggest part of why I stepped back as well. I need to learn to process better 
learned to be better. And through that, you know, I've learned how to deal with it in some ways better. And I'm still going through that process. It's not something that happens like that. It's, it takes time. And I'm quite okay with that. I'm okay with the process. I'm okay with the ongoingness. Like, like you said, I don't see myself as a victim. No. I see myself as a fighter. Um, I watched my dad go through cancer. I know what it is to fight. I've seen it. I witnessed it. And I don't think I'll ever stop fighting. As much as like sometimes you want to, you sometimes want to lay down. Trust me, I've had the, I've had those thoughts. But I know you need to step up again. And that's the hardest part: stepping up again especially when you're struggling to, to stand sometimes. So, yeah. You know, one of, the, one of the main comments on the other side of the commentariat is this girl is an angel. She, you yeah. were here, you were, you were, I think, one of the early ones to get this brutality from the government, to get these results because of your spirit, because you're here to lead us to something better. I deeply believe that, Casey. Oh, I appreciate it. I, I see it more so I'm not the angel. I'm the, I've got so many blessings around me. So what you're seeing me as an angel is just I've got blessings. No matter like how many hardships I've gone through, mm -hmm. I've got so many blessings around me, which includes you <laughs> So and other people. So, you know, that, that's what they're seeing. They're seeing the blessings around me that's connected to me, the, the fire, and that's part of like being connected to amazing people. Like, I could talk about my character all I want, but in the end, I know that's to do with my experiences and people included. And when we, we understand that, you know, we understand it, we all need to join as one to grow and be better. And in this country to, to find a far nicer way to deal with one another. Now yes. this, this government is on the brink of going. I don't believe Labour will ever be voted in again. I hope not. But one of the <laughs> blessings I want to bring to you today is... Barry Duffield, who is, um, we're going to get you and Barry to talk and do this as a series. Now there is the potential, Barry is determined to take a legal case showing what's going on in his body, in his blood, mm. as a result of this jab. Yeah. He would love, I know, to meet with you and discuss that. Would you be open to that? Yeah. He's a real warrior like you are. I can see that. You two together. <laughs> could really open something up on the world stage in terms of a discussion. And we have a very special lawyer here today to talk about this with. Yeah. So we'll do that shortly and, and link the interviews one after the other. Casey, what else would you love to see? How many, how many people are reaching out to you? Are there a lot? It's like too many day by day. I'm seeing new ones day by day. It's, it, count, it comes to a point where you're not surprised, which is the hardest point to recognise. You're like, well, yeah, this has been happening this whole time. Another one, yeah. What are the sorts of symptoms you're hearing about? Heart, stuff like I've had. Neurological. Yeah, neurological, all of that. I'm seeing a lot of that. Those ones, they definitely hurt because they're very personal because of what I've gone through and what I've experienced. So they're very hard, especially when I see younger People going through that, you know, younger than me. What sorts of ages, Casey? I've seen 19-year-olds, I've seen 16-year-olds, I've seen children. Are these people that are reaching out or people in hospital you're seeing? Reaching out, I've seen social media, I've seen all these things of people in the same groups that I'm in yes. and who are just looking for help. And they're not getting that from the public system. And they're certainly not getting any acknowledgement from the mainstream media. No. Rob Martin came to our first court case. And when I came out, I appealed, I just appealed to the media, don't do a story about me. It, it, this will come and go, whatever this nonsense is. Mm. Please do a story about Rob Martin and Casey and Barry. And not one, not one media person has run. Uh, with the, the media, I would, one thing they've done for me is they've wrongfully profiled me. Yeah. And they know that. They've wrongfully profiled a lot of people like you. They are aware of this stuff. They are standing on a thing of not enough information. They just put out a story because they see and they ask specialists that don't even know us, that have not even come to talk to us. And they go by their word, even though they've not experienced what we experience. As a proper journalism, and you know this, you must talk to these people, hear their experience, see what they've gone through to be able to share the story. That is why I respect you so much, because you come to us you see our pain, you see what we've gone through, and you go like, yes, that's a story worth seeing.
They're not doing this. The main media is not doing this for us. They need to understand to be ethically, morally correct, as much as we all want to judge one another, but we know at heart, morality, that is a big thing at core. Ethically, you make vows in different points. Ethically, we make vows. And when you get into a big job like media, like being a doctor, like being a lawyer, as we know, these ethical vows are high. Respect them, respect others, respect their stories, respect them as a person. You cannot judge them when you do not know them. Have you had any mainstream media ever reach out directly to you for interviews? Only stuff. And that was in the early days? Yeah. And what happened then? They twisted a lot of what you said, didn't they? Yeah. They were the ones that profiled me wrong. Yeah. Stuff is unbelievably cruel. Yeah. In the local body elections, they became renowned for just hit piece after hit piece after hit piece on anybody who stood up and questioned the Labour government. And the woman who bought that for a dollar from the government is a, is a very close ally of Jacinda Ardern, so there's zero credibility. Nevertheless, it's an appeal. Stuff, even you can turn it around. Most of us see stuff as stuffed, but what about the other media? Herald, what about TV One, TV Three, Radio New Zealand? I appeal to you. I can put you in touch with Casey and you could do interviews to tell her story, not to do a hit piece, to tell her story. What is happening physically? Are you still in the wheelchair largely or are you able to walk a little bit more? I remember you saying it felt like knives, the pain in your, in your knees. It felt like you were being stabbed from inside. It still does to this day, even though I'm pushing myself to walk a lot more. Crazy. I You don't... just live with that? Yeah, yeah, you become used to it. <laughs> it's, it's a weird it's a weird process when you get used to the pain and when you get used to everything like that the feelings that you go through I when I hit that that point where I was getting used to the pain I was like I don't think this is normal but at least I'm not feeling a certain way about it now I can process it a little bit better now it's back to that mind using your mind yeah as and I've gone through all the processes to set myself up correctly, like to ensure that I can keep going. I've not got any help from ACC, no help from the public system to do exercises. I've just had to look by myself and get voice from GP, who's been amazing. My GP is absolutely amazing. And from other doctors who are willing to come forward to give advice. And those people are just amazing for doing that because I know what they're putting forward with that. Do you want to say names or keep them protected? I'll keep them protected. Isn't, isn't that an indictment of New Zealand? Yeah. Instead of being able to say what an amazing doctor, after all those shoddy doctors in the public system who turned away, I remember that one doctor who shook your shoulders and said, stop pretending, unforgivable yeah. behaviour. You've finally yeah. found some good medical people. Yeah. I mean, praise them, oh, praise yes. to them. Boy. Um, one day, hopefully, they can feel comfortable to have their names spoken and that they won't get ridiculed or their jobs taken away. What a, so. what a crazy clown world, New Zealand, we are in. So are you <laughs> able to walk with this stick a little bit more? A little bit. I try to walk as much as I can. Even walking can be debilitating for me. I try to do it as much as I can. I have a frame that I use as well when I want to do a little bit of walking around the groceries and doing all that stuff. I can sit down on it at least. Yeah but it's just trying to exercise and trying to keep up any type of movement because keeping stagnant is not good. I understand that and I don't want to be stagnant. I'm very much all pushed through my pain to keep moving. And I think people don't understand that with diseases, you can still keep moving. You can still keep doing stuff. It's just, you've got to fight through the pain. You've got to fight through what you're feeling. And strength comes with the mind and with the heart and also with just keep keep going and know that you can keep going. And that's one thing I learned for myself as well. I can keep going. It's hard and day by day I still have flare-ups. I no doubt after today we'll probably have a little flare-up, but that's okay. Just because of the, the there's a certain stress involved in any of yeah. this and speaking out again. Yeah, yeah. I know there'll, there'll be a lot of messages of love and support for you, Casey. You are dearly beloved by so many. But the, the, the horror of you and that level of pain and having to push through every day is just... It's just unbearable and you call it a disease and maybe it's caused diseases in your body. It's dis-ease, it's lack of ease. But at its heart, 
Are you still absolutely clear that this was caused by those jabs? 100%. 100%. 100%. Before this, you never had any of these symptoms at all? No. Yeah. That one we have to really put in the government's face. Chris Hipkins, before the election, you might like to step forward and be a hero and support our Casey, support Rob, support Barry financially, try and make yourself look good for this election. I mean, it's something because your predecessor did nothing to help these people. Case, you, your singing was wonderful. One time we put out a Celine Dion song that you just sang here in the studio a cappella. I think because um, I do feel like a flare, it's going to come out, so I won't sing. But one song that's been very touching for my heart at the moment is My Body is a Cage. This is a old song, I can't remember <clears throat> off the top of my head right now who's, who, who sings it, but... Um, yeah, I'll send that to you as I well. It really touched me because the song is about how you feel stuck in your body and unable to dance with the one you love. Yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a very feeling song, but it it spoke to my soul. So we've got a little bit more to do to do today. So I don't want to put you under any more pressure one on one. But Casey, what a delight! It is me always too. so beautiful to oh, see me you. Too. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> We'll bring in Barry and we'll bring in. <laughs>